In this next short video, we're going to talk about the theory of comparative advantage, outsourcing, rating those outsourced providers, and then how to create a supplier report card. Creating a supplier report card is not in your textbook, but it kind of goes along very, uh, it ties in nicely with the rating outsource providers. So we're going to, I'm going to put those two together and just kind of walk through how they're both very simple and useful tools to look at how to rate vendors or providers and also to manage them going forward. So let's start by talking about the theory of comparative advantage. The theory focuses on the economic concept of relative advantage. And if an external provider, regardless of its geographic location, can perform activities more productively than the purchasing firm, then the external provider should do that work. It helps organizations to focus on what they do best, which is their core competencies. So if you are Apple, for instance, and you make phones or computers or whatever it may be, your, your core competency is the design, the differentiation, uh, creating products that people love. But you aren't necessarily a world-class manufacturer. So Apple outsources its manufacturing to uh, many of the large outsourced manufacturers that are located in China, and that and manufacturing is their core competency. So um, keep that in mind when you're thinking about what is my company good at. If it's not necessarily manufacturing or some kind of service that there might be opportunities to outsource some of your products or services uh, so that you can really focus on who you are uh, and what you do best, and those are considered your core competencies. So outsourcing is transferring a firm's activities that have traditionally been internal to external suppliers. Okay, internal activities uh, to an external supplier. Now, that can be manufacturing. It can be recruiting. It can be new employee training. You can outsource lots of different things. It doesn't just have to be manufacturing. And the other thing to keep in mind with outsourcing to a firm that does something better than you, uh, which is their core competency and not yours, when you're outsourcing something, don't get confused with offshoring. We are so used to hearing the word outsourcing, we just assume it means we're taking something that we've done internally and we're shipping it overseas and letting someone else do that work. And it's absolutely not the same thing. Offshoring and outsourcing are not the same. We will get into those two topics a lot more in chapter 11, but it's relevant to keep that in mind as we go through these next couple slides when we're going to be rating our outsource providers. That does not mean we are offshoring them and having things done overseas. Uh, those two terms are not used interchangeably. Okay, so rating provider selection criteria. Uh, this is in table 2.3 uh, uh, in the textbook. And many factors play a role in determining which suppliers that we want to use or outsource something to. Choosing suppliers based off of just the lowest price is not really a practice that's um, done these days. Sometimes we need, we need an outsourced provider or a vendor to just provide us with a low cost and that's fine. But usually when we're outsourcing something, we're also looking at an organization that can deliver a high quality of goods that are on time uh, deliveries and also have a competitive cost. Maybe not the lowest cost, but a competitive cost. And so to help us make decisions that are best for our organizations, we assign weights to what is most important to us. And again, it doesn't have to be lowest cost. It can be high technology. It can be fast turnaround time. It can be, do they have a, a good quality performance? These are all criteria that our organizations will take into consideration when looking at products or services that we want to outsource to, uh, or if we're picking between two different vendors. Um, something like you see on the screen right now, a very simplistic uh, weighting of choosing which provider we want to use. I've used this many times in my career and uh, just uh, did an analysis like this at a very large hospital uh, and health system where they were determining which vendor they wanted to use. And one vendor had a lower cost, one vendor had really good customer service, one vendor had really high quality, uh, but they were all kind of close. And so we, we picked the criteria that was important to us on the far left, and then we assigned a weighting. And that weighting was determined by a whole bunch of key stakeholders. So, um, you know, quality was the most important to them, and as a health system, that's good. I'm glad that, that was most important. 
uh, and then cost came next, and then a couple other factors were taken into consideration after that. And all of those weights, uh, you can see like on the example on the screen, uh, they add up to 100%. So you put your criteria on the far left, your weight is right next to that, and then you get a group of people together and you determine a score for that supplier. Now, not everyone agrees. So what I've done many times is we take a poll. And so again, at this health system, what we did is we essentially sent out to the key 15 stakeholders who were making this decision, we want you to rate vendor A versus vendor B versus vendor C. How is their engineering skills? How is their uh, production process capability? How is their distribution capability? And they each had a different score. So we even um, took an average of each one of those scores, and then we plugged it in, which would be the score per vendor. And then all you do is you take the weight times the score, and that gives you a weighted score. So in this example, Faber Paint scored a 3.9. That was their total weighted score. And Smith's Die scored a 4.2. So if you were deciding, your organization was deciding between Faber Paint and Smith's Die, you'd pick Smith's Die because they have, a, they have the best weighted score. They have a higher weighted score. You can do a very similar type analysis uh, for supplier report cards, where you're looking at a weighted score or you're assigning weights to what is most important to you. So for this example that you see on the screen, you've got uh, a supplier report card where quality is worth 35% or 35 points. Supplier delivery is worth 35 points. Supplier cost controls or purchase price variance are worth 20 points and supplier inventory management, or how often they turned over that inventory, was worth 10 points. And when you add all up, that up, is worth 100 points. And if you got 100 points, then your score was excellent. Okay, I would give my key suppliers a report card every quarter. I would give them a quarterly business review. We would sit them down and we would say, here's how you performed this quarter. You did this with quality, this with purchase price variance, you did this with delivery, you did this with our inventory management, and this quarter you were excellent, last quarter you were very good, congratulations, you've done better over the course of the last couple months. And this is very good for managing your suppliers and making sure that they're performing how you want them to perform. And if they're not, then you take corrective action. This also, even in this example, you can see when a supplier does poorly, you can either tell them they need to improve or if they perform this poorly for the next quarter that you're going to stop using their services. So you can put them on notice if their supplier report card gives them a failing grade that they need to improve their performance or you're going to find someone else to do business with. So for this example, you've got, um, again, the four key metrics that this organization uh, deemed important. And here was the rating out of 100 points. And that's what gave them their grade. And you can see this uh, on the far left. Uh, this is a different report card and it's color coded and you know it's, it's really pretty, but uh, this vendor uh, received an A and a score of 92%. And again, this is probably something that was done uh, quarterly for that vendor. So now let's take a second and let's just do this in Excel really fast uh, together. So let's do the rating outsource providers. I'm going to copy and paste everything that you see from the textbook for Faber Paint and Smith's Die. The weighting for engineering skills was 20 points or 20%. Production capability was 15%. Distribution capability is 5%. Quality performance was 10%. Facilities location was 5%. Financial strength, 15%. Information systems, 10%. And integrity of business, 20%. So those are all the different weightings uh, for uh, what we determine important in making our selection criteria, and that adds up to 100%. So Faber Paint received a 4 for engineering skills, 4 per, for production capabilities, 4 for distribution, 2 for quality, 2 for facilities location, 4 for financial strength, 2 for information systems, and 5 for integrity. Smith's Die when you give them their score, they received a five for engineering skills, five for production capability. So all, all we're saying here is that when the team looks at this vendor, they believe that Smith's die has a superior production capability 
versus Faber Paint. Four is still pretty good, but Smith's Die got a five. So they have a better score for um, production capabilities. For distribution capability, they are worse. They have a three score. But as we'll see later, because we've already we already know the answer here, uh, production capability is weighted at 15%, whereas distribution capability is only weighted at 5%. So it's better for Smith's Die to score higher in the highly weighted categories. They got a three for quality, a three for facilities, a five for financial strength, a five for information systems, and a three for integrity. So now we just need to figure out the total weighted score, and we're just going to take our percent, multiplied by the score, and that gives us 3.9. Now we're going to do the same thing for Smith's die, 5 times 20%. We're going to drag that down to keep the formula. We add all of those up, and they are at 4.2. So Smith's die had a higher weighted score than Faber Paint. For the supplier report card, I forgot to delete the answers there. Um, I, and we can just make anything up as we go. But for Smith's die, who is now the vendor that uh, we've given the business to. So we gave Smith's Die the business, and now we want to manage them on a quarterly basis. So their score for quality, their, uh, their parts per million defects, let's say they got a score of 300. That would give them 28 points, 28 earned points. For supplier delivery, the on-time delivery score, uh, they had a, let's say, 97%. So that gives them 28 points for there as well. For supplier purchase price variance or cost control, let's just say that they had a 93 score, uh, which is worth the full 20 points. And then for supplier inventory management, they had 20 inventory turns, which gives them a score of eight points. So if you add all of those up, Smith's Die got a score of 84, and 84 points would be a very good rating. Now, I just completely made up all these scores, but that's how quickly and easily you can put together a supplier report card for Smith's Die or whoever based off of criteria that your organization has determined given the weightings and then the score uh, per each metric. So in this example, they were very good because they got a score of 84. So that's it for rating outsource uh, providers and also supplier report cards. This is all because we're looking at the theory of comparative advantage and determining which vendors we want to outsource our products to. Um, and then this is how we measure them going forward.